I was going to preach on topic today uh, with what happened with the Essendon footballer, um, football club's president and how he um, was sacked. Well, he resigned, but really they sacked him. So I was going to preach on that today, but I've decided to change it. The Lord laid it on my heart to, to preach on something else. And it's something that I actually took the uh, devotion last night for the, for the Navy SEALs. And um, it's a group of men and women around the world. Um, and we're just dedicated to serving the Lord in different countries. And we're there to help each other. Um, and so every Saturday night, thanks to Daylight Saving, it's now 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> that's, we join them here in this country. Um, at, at this stage, they're three hours behind us in Manila and all other time zones around the world. But we just take time out and to, to, um, to teach each other and to, um, and to preach the Word of God and to really exhort one another in our different localities, our different churches, but also together. And um, so my, my um, devotion last night was serving as a team, as a team. And indeed, we can apply it to our, ch- our church here today. We can apply this. But we can also pr- apply it in a broader sense, of like in the book of Acts where we have Paul and, and um, his cohorts. They, they all served as a team. They were sent out from the church um, of Antioch and other churches as well, and they served as teams, as team members and, and team players. Uh, and that's how they got the word of God out. It just wasn't your lone mavericks, your lone wolf that were doing that. Um, the Bible way is to do it through a church, in a church setting, which is why I like to sort of more endorse the Navy SEALs. If you'd like to join, just let me know. Um, it costs nothing. All you need is a tablet or an iPhone or a computer with Telegram on it, and you can join in. I'm sure one day that'll all be turned off. <laughs> but while it's not, we'll enjoy using it um, for, the Lord's, for the Lord's work and his blessings. But serving as a team is, is the main uh, subject today, is the main heading, and then there is a subheading. Let's just read what the Word of God has got to say, if we could please, in 2 Corinthians 8. And we'll start at verse 12, and we'll finish down at uh, verse 24. I'll keep my eye on the time. The Word of God says, For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that others men, sorry, I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he uh, that hath gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed, he accepted the exhortation, but but being more forward, forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not only that, and not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and and declaration of your ready mind, avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance, which is administered by us, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things. But now how much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you, Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians was written in the summer of 57 AD from Macedonia possibly in in Philippi. The text here describes a detachment team that was associated with the Apostle Paul. This team was comprised of Titus, also somebody who was called the brother, in verse 18, and verse 22, our brother. So there's at least three men on this occasion. 
The purpose was to collect the offering for the saints in Jerusalem who were being persecuted and going through a hard time. And here we were utilising a team was part of Paul's financial accountability strategy. You know, we've got to be accountable for the finances of the church. And here it's quite evident that we, if we have money to spare and there are other churches in need, we do this. We help them. It's a biblical principle. It's a biblical principle. The two men who travelled with Titus are unknown. Some think it's the brother was Luke and others Trophimus. Some think that our brother was Titius. But in many of these cases, when names aren't given, we can often insert our own name in these places. Somebody who's ready and willing to help in the Lord's work. The, sub, the subheading is, do I have what it takes to serve the Lord with others? Do I have what it takes to serve the Lord with others? This detachment team was sent by Paul to get the money off the saints and then to deliver it to the saints in Jerusalem. But do we have what it takes to serve the Lord with others? When we were up at, um, case in point, when we were up at the fellowship meetings, this, this was, yeah, I, what did I say? Nowhere, good. Kyogle, the fellowship meetings at Kyogle. Um, we met a man up there who'd been known to the local church up there by about two weeks. His name was um, Richard Wilkins. And he was from Smoko, which is just the other side of Bright. And he'd ridden his push bike from Smoko all the way up to King Arroy. Yes, a push bike. All the way up to King Arroy for a Scottish festival. And yes, he wore a kilt on a push bike. But thankfully, the bike shorts. <laughs> Anthony <laughs> often talks about kilts. But the thing is, he, he, but he, was, he was a Christian. And he'd be, he was almost like a lone wolf. He's going, just, he speaks to anybody and everybody, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. And the Lord can use men like that. And it was great to catch up with him. I told him where we were. And he said, well, look, if the Lord leads, I'll come in and visit you one day. I said, yes, do that. Do that. But he was out doing the work of the Lord. But he was doing that as in the, as in the lone wolf situation. Now, that can be good but can also have some, um, some bad about it as well, especially when someone's put under pressure. Not everybody can handle that sort of a, a lifestyle. We're meant to go out as a team biblically, as a team, because it strengthens one another, it exhorts one another, and it keeps us all in check. It keeps us all in check. Do I have what it takes to serve others? To serve others. Bear with me for a second. There are 10 qualities needed in serving within a team. There are 10 qualities needed that we'll see through this point of scripture here that are needed to serve as a team. Quality number one, do I have an earnest heart care? And we see this in verse 16, the same earnest care into the heart of Titus. Do each and every one of us have the same earnest care in the heart for believers and for churches. Notice that this desire, this heart care comes from God's working in us. We just got to go to Philippians 2.20 to see this where it says, and it says of Timothy, Philippians 2.20. Just turn up there quickly, please. Philippians 2.20. And it says here, for I have ma no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. This is Paul talking to Timothy. For I have no man like-minded, like-minded, who will naturally care for your state. So we need this, this, this heart care, this earnest heart care, if we are to serve the Lord with others. Remember, we're looking at 10 points or 10 qualities that each and every one of us should have in serving the Lord. And indeed, this is what these three men had when they were serving the Lord with Titus. Well, that makes two serving with Titus, so that makes three. But quality number two, 
Is am I on the same page as the team? We see this in the word same in verse 16. The word same. Are we all on the same page? Do we all want to see folks saved? Do we all want to see folks have the total assurance of their salvation? Do we want to see these things? Are we on the same page? If you're serving as a team, you have to be on the same page. It's no use going, oh, Brother Dan and I want to go over to Ghana. And I checked, we, we made sure that our principles and, the, and, and our, um, what we wanted to achieve there, if we're on the same page. I sent him a letter and said, are we on the same page? And he, and he wrote back and said, yes, we are. It's exactly the way I feel and think. We need to, serve, we need to, we need to um, 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 seed a new church there. Because they's lost, they have lost authority in that country. Through history, the novations are not there, the Donatists are not there, and they were lost during the last two, well, probably a thousand years. There's no church with authority. They were persecuted out of the place. And what's left there now, and the evidence is that we can see, is that there's no churches that belong to the Lord there. A New Testament church. Oh, there are other denominations and everything else, and that's fine, the Lord, Lord can use them. But he promised us that he would preserve his church, his way. And he used the personal pronoun, it will be my church, not man's church. Churches. Church generic, churches individually. So we need to be on the same page with an earnest heart care. Earnest heart care. Verse 17 says here, For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. Quality number three, am I ready and willing for a challenge? Am I ready and willing for a challenge? The word indeed indicates an enthusiastic acceptance in serving the Lord. Indeed. Indeed. And he accepted the exhortation from Paul. He accepted it. You know, the word indeed indicates an enthusiastic acceptance on our behalf. Are we, are we enthusiastic about leading people to Christ? Are we enthusiastic about spreading the gospel? Brothers and sisters, we should be because we're saving people from hell. We are. And we're part of the Lord's work. He is doing His work through us for His glory. For His glory. But are we willing to accept that? And do I show ministry initiative? Do I have to be told everything to do or do I see a need and take care of it? The words here, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. Do you have to be shown exactly what to do? Or do you put your hand up and say, hey, I can do that. I can do that for the Lord. I, can, I, can do, I want to do that. I want to serve. Especially as we're getting older, we're, we're going to meet God sooner than the younger ones, generally speaking. <laughs> I know that's not always the case. But generally speaking, do we have that within us? Do we have ministry initiative? And this is where something I see within the Navy SEALs. There is initiative. There are young people. Young people who want to serve the Lord. And that's something that I want to really drum into our church here in the years moving ahead. If the Lord tarries, and he may just tarry, because he wants folks saved. You and I might want him back here tomorrow, and yes we do, but he wants to leave it as late as possible. Because he is showing people grace. And yes, even Dan Andrews' grace. And I struggle with that. So help me, I struggle. But if the Lord just says, you've got to pray for him. It's hard. I get it. But we must. Verse 18, and we have sent with him the brother. The brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout the churches. Quality number five do you and I have a good reputation throughout the churches? Do we have a good reputation? The brother here had a good reputation throughout the churches. A good reputation. We need a good reputation. Such praise is earned through an effective and fruitful ministry. Acts uh, AR 16, 2 says this of Timothy, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. See, he had a good reputation in the churches. 
a good reputation in the churches. And my goodness, isn't it so easy to lose your reputation? It really is so easy to lose your reputation. Excuse me. I saw this last night in Facebook. Um, yeah, look, it's insanity. This child care centre in America. Uh, I don't, you, you know that scary face called the screaming face? It's white and it's a long chin and everything. Four women or one woman, I could tell she was a woman, unless she was a bloke. She had ring finger nails and a ring. <laughs> had this mask on, scaring preschoolers at a, yes, at a daycare centre. And you could see the horror of the little children on their faces. I'm nearly crying now. For, I, that, that, that knocked me. This is insane. This is insanity. They didn't do it just once. The person who recorded it didn't get it on the camera because the cameras don't record everything in this, in this daycare centre. Isn't that interesting? But yet this woman recorded on the phone so she could expose these people. And she did. And four people were sacked and the police are looking into it. Well, thank goodness for that. But how do you do that to a child for a start? The horror on their faces. No, thank you. I just put a, put a post out just saying, you know, I'm angry. And the, and the millstone's coming. You offend one of these little ones. It's better for you that you were cast into the depths of the sea with a millstone hung around your neck than to let Christ get at you. Wow. But you see, the reputation of that place is now gone. Gone. I would suggest that, that place will be finished. Unduly hope so. How could you let something like that happen in the first place? Uh, our reputation, you monsters, yeah. It's evil. It is just wickedness. But we need to watch our reputations, and it's earned through an effective and fruitful ministry. The brother here had an effective and fruitful ministry within this church, and the other churches saw that. The other churches saw that. Verse 19, and not only, and not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us, with this grace which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Quality number six, could I be trusted by the churches and indeed can I be trusted by my church? Can I be trusted? Some of us are shaking our head no and maybe we're being honest. But this is a thing. Can we be trusted in our own churches? Can we be trusted? And it, and it is such a shame, but pedophilia is alive and ripe in the, Lord, in the Lord's churches and in a lot of denominations around the world. We've got to keep our eyes open on this sort of thing. You know, that can wreck a church apart from a child's life. And this is where any of us, no, not any of us can fall for that one, but wickedness, it is just total wickedness. But how can you trust someone like that? You cannot. You can't. You can't trust anyone like that. It is such a wicked, wicked sin. And it is just totally evil. Totally evil. But this interesting thing about the brother, he didn't volunteer. They wanted him so bad that he was chosen. The churches chose him to do this job because they could trust him. They could trust him. They could trust him with children. They could trust him with their wives. They could just trust him. And isn't that nice that we can belong to a church here where we can trust each other? We can trust each other. We shouldn't be living in fear in a church like this because of some people. We just shouldn't. And we should all be, have our eyes ready. Pastor Frank, you know, when we were over there for their fellowship meetings a few months ago, we were talking, then, excuse me, I've got to go. And bang, he, this, this guy had wandered in from the church because they're right near a shopping centre. And um, Julie had words and the guy left because he could see what was happening. He understands what pedophilia looks like and he dealt with it on the spot. Dealt with it on the spot. So you don't let these sort of things in. If you tell me if somebody comes in, I need to know. <laughs> I, I really need to know. Because then I can deal with it. And I will deal with it. 
trust me, I will deal with it. <laughs> there are children involved. That's the line. That's the line. No one steps over. You just cannot. But this man was chosen. Verse 20, avoiding this, that no man should blame us in the abundance which is administered by us. Verse 21, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Quality number seven, am I totally and openly honest? Am I totally and openly honest? In God's sight as well as in men's sight. Now, that's integrity that is a part of your character. Remember, the Lord's working on your character through sanctification of the Spirit. We're saved, we're justified, that's it. We are His, we belong to Him. We know that in James 5.11. We know, we know. Sorry, John 5.11. We know. But we are then being worked on through our character. The things that we go through, the trials, the tribulations, the Lord is working on your character, building you up, to someone that he can use that gives him glory. And honesty and our integrity is one of those things. Verse 22. And we have sent with them our brother, this is the other guy, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Here the key word is diligent and reliable. Sorry, that's oftentimes. The word oftentimes. This person was reliable. When we say we're going to do something and then we change our mind five minutes before the event, that's not very reliable. And I'm sure you've been let down. You, someone's promised to go with you somewhere and then they ring up the day before and say, oh, by the way, I can't make it tomorrow. I've got a better offer. Basically, that's what it is. Instead of going a few somewhere to the shopping mall, <laughs> there might be some hunting experience that you really want. I don't know. That's just from a bloke's perspective. perspective. But I'm sure you've been let down. Someone rings up and says, oh, look, I can't do that. Well, that's not very reliable. But the word here is oftentimes, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things. So quality number eight is, am I reliable? Will I do what I say? Will I get there on time? Will I do this? Will I? Well, we should if we're reliable. Oftentimes. And quality number nine from the same verse is, am I diligent in all that I do? Diligence means to be hard working and prompt. It's the opposite of being lazy. Sloth. The Bible talks about slothfulness. Are we sloth or are we hard working and prompt? Hard working and prompt. We need to be hard working and prompt. In the Lord's church here, but also in the kingdom as well. We gave out a hand track the other day um, when we were putting money in the bank for the Lord's church. And this woman came up and stood beside me. I don't know if I've told you all about this. I know I've told someone. And we just started speaking with the teller next to me and I just happened to put that little word, God bless him there. And... Uh, the light went on in Andy's head, so he quickly rushed up and gave me a hand track. As, as a good Baptist pastor, I didn't have one in my pocket. <laughs> so. But Andrew quickly came up to me and said, yes, I know what to do with that. Here, would you like to read this? And she said, thank you. God bless, she goes. See, it just takes one little word, one little sentence, just to open the door. And then the Lord, the Holy Spirit, can do his work. Are we diligent in our efforts to win the lost. Are we diligent? Verse 23. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner. Look how Paul describes Titus. He is my partner. You know, when you're working for the Lord, we are partners together. I don't see us as being partners with Christ as that puts us on our evil footing. We're partners together in his service because we are, in his, we are his servants. We are his servants. He is my partner and fellow helper concerning you or our brethren be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Quality number 10, am I a team player? Paul never considered those who served with him as lackeys or anything less than himself. 
He was on an equal footing. He was on an equal footing. Am I a team player? Am I a team player? Or am I just a lone wolf, a maverick? Just doing what I think where the Lord leads me. Now, that's possibly true for, for some. And we're not to stop them. If they're doing the Lord's work, he'll lead them. He'll lead them. But the example in Scripture is that when we're in team ministry, it's through one of his churches. And it's to help each other, strengthen each other, to remind each other of who we serve, of who we serve. So am I a team player? Verse 24, Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. Those five words, the proof of your love in being a team player. Go back to verse 8 in Corinthians. It says here, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the, fr- of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. It's all about the sincerity of your love. If you really want to serve Christ, if you really want to serve in one of his churches, it's the sincerity of your love. Your love for Christ. Your love for the brethren. That's why we don't fight and squabble here. There's no love in that. We're to help each other. Help each other. Push the kingdom. Grab some hand tracks. Hand them out. I have to order some more and some more Bibles. That's what we've got to do. And just keep handing them out. Reach the lost. But the proof of your love is the sincerity of your love. Are we sincere in serving Christ as a team? As a church, are we sincere? There's a hell that's, that's there ready for people who don't know the Lord. And he wants us to go and share the gospel, spread the gospel as a team, as indicated in the book, in the book of Corinthians here and in Acts. It's all throughout it. Read the book of Acts and you'll see the teams that the Lord used under Paul's leadership. Under Paul's leadership. We went through the book of Acts last year. We may go through that again sometime next year. It's all about team playing and being on the same page. But did you know that there is also a blessing of team ministry? A blessing of team ministry. And you see this in verse 23. It says here, to the messengers of the churches. You know, the churches are blessed because people go out, which is why we support missionaries. We're blessed because of this. We're blessed because we're supporting them. We're blessed. This is the blessing of team ministry. And the messenger is one who has been sent. You know, these men were not mavericks or lone wolves doing their own thing. The Lord's work is done through his churches. This is what is indicated time and time again in the New Testament. Then there is a glory of Christ in verse 23. Preachers and Christian servants should not expect to receive a claim from the world their reward is far more glorious. Just keep your fingers there, but turn to 1 Peter 5, 4. 1 Peter 5, 4. The Word of God says, that when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. There is a reward for you. A crown of glory that fadeth not away. I liken this to the Academy Awards or the Logies. They all get their reward today, but it means nothing in eternity. Nothing. It will burn. Like everything on planet Earth and the things we hold dear as our possessions, it will burn one day and it's gone. But there will be a crown of glory that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you if we serve as a team. Brethren, we must serve as a team. And the third point is we need to consider the attitude of this group. You know, they were willing to be sent. They were willing to be sent. Willing. What did Isaiah say? Here, Lord, send me. Send me. We must be willing to be sent. We must be willing to be used of the Lord. And this is why the sanctification of your soul is so important. When you realise the importance that you are in Christ Jesus. If it wasn't for Christ, we wouldn't be important. But because we 
we understand that he is our saviour and we've asked him to save us, we've asked for forgiveness, he then is working on our lives and he can use us. He can and he will use us. But they were willing to be sent. 2 Corinthians 9, 3, we're just, just a page over yet. Have I sent the brethren, lest your boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, you may be ready. See, they sent the brethren. They sent the brethren. It's a team effort. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you. You see, they were willing to be exhorted by Paul in um, 2 Corinthians 9, 5. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. See, these are blessings. Blessings which were bestowed. The word exhort means to be called near, to be instructed or directed. Are we willing to be exhorted by God himself? Are we willing to be exhorted the Lord's commands through this, one of his churches, to do his will? And maybe you think, oh, there's not much I can do. Well, you can speak to people. If you've got a tongue, you can speak to people. And if you've got usable hands and arms, you can give a hand track to somebody, anybody. You can do that. You can do that. Now, though each man in this case, in 2 Corinthians 8, was a remarkable and seasoned preacher in his own right, they took directions from the team leader. If there is a team leader, then you listen to that team leader. It doesn't mean the team leader's right in everything. But if you don't listen to someone who's in charge, then the whole thing will fall apart. It then just becomes an individual matter of what I feel like and what I think I could be doing. We go by the word of God, not by feelings. Not by feelings, we go by the word of God. Barnabas at first looked like he was going to be the leader, if you read the book of Acts. But Paul quickly took over. And Barnabas was willing because he could see that was of the Lord. Sometimes not all people who, who think that they're good for positions or authority are what the Lord chooses. Look at Saul and King David. <laughs> King David, he had brothers that were much taller than him and everything else, but the Lord chose him. A red-headed guy, but he was good at throwing a stone. And he hit the mark. Yeah. And Saul, he was, he was you know, head and shoulders above everybody else and you think he'd make a good leader, but he failed. In the end, he failed. Pride and jealousy and covetousness. And it ended miserably for him. Ended miserably for him. See, God sees what we don't. He looks at the heart. How are our hearts today? And by using these three men in the service here, something that may have seemed like a meaningless task but mind you the saints at Jerusalem needed some coin they were, they were broke they're probably finding it hard to buy food which is another reason we've got that freezer ministry there put some food in it it's for us who are going through a hard time or for somebody else who's going through a hard time so please someone take control of that and, and then we can put food in there if one of the members could do that that'd be great so this t team's work freed Paul and others to continue evangelising. By taking up, by being a member of the church and taping up a, a position or something of that, of ministry, then you're freeing up other people to continue the work in their designated areas. In their designated areas. By, by supplying the needs to like the Passards or, or the Mackays who are also in Papua New Guinea, it's freeing them up so they don't have to go out and get a job to stay on the mission field. You see, it's freeing them up. And this is what we need to do in our local church, is to free the others up by joining in the fight, joining the team, joining the team for Christ. Although it is not found in the narrative of the book of Acts, it was at this time when a great work was done in Aquilium. For the timeline, there is no other time where this could fit. So the work at Acrylium, if I've pronounced that right, Acrylium, 
that wouldn't have gone ahead if these three men hadn't have done what they did. And it was Paul that had to go take the money to Jerusalem. There's a great work done in that town, in that city. Because someone said, I'll do it. I'll be part of the team and I'll do it and I'll do whatever I can and I'll be reliable, I will be honest and I will do it. I will do it. So in conclusion, you know, whether in full-time ministry or serving faithfully in one or more of the ministries of one's church, the work is not all about you. Many are involved in reaching this goal. Many are involved. John 4, 35 to 38 has these words. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. See, there is fruit, there is rewards in heaven for you. And it's not wrong to want rewards, because Jesus says you will have rewards. I want to give you rewards and fruit in heaven. Maybe it's the children who receive our money in Papua New Guinea for their church and they get saved when they get older. Who knows? You'll see their eyes in heaven. Or some lost soul who was, who was in, in the dark depravity of some tribe come out and get saved. You might not meet him in this life, then the money that we send, you may not see the fruits of it now. But in eternity, when we get into heaven, you will see his eyes. Or that young lady that died two years ago, she was saved, remember? I believe she was with the Mackays. And she got tuberculosis and very quickly her body shriveled up. She was in a lot of pain with bed sores. There was no one there to turn her. No one to turn her. But she died. And guess where she is now? She's in heaven. Because the missionaries are able to stay there with their evangelizing, doing their job, while you and I supported them. See, that's why when we give gifts and offerings to the Lord, we don't do it grudgingly. We just don't. We do it from a heart of care. And that was the first quality that we saw. An earnest heart care is what we need. Verse 36, let us read that. And he that receiveth, receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Together we're rejoicing with the people that we are connected with in our ministries overseas. We're connected. And hearing is, is that saying true? One soweth and another reapeth. 38, I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labour, other men laboured and ye entered into their labours. Many a time I was reading, and I think it was Brother Dan that put it on the um, on um, uh, telegram, how these ministries, I think there was two brothers and another chap, they went to this uh, island, who were these natives, and they pretty much just kill anyone who puts foot on their island. There is another island that still exists today like that, closer to... Sri Lanka or India. One young man was killed there two years ago. With a, he got speared to death. You may have heard about that. But these three men went and they, gave, and they, they flew over in their aeroplanes. And they, and they would fly over and they would drop things on the island just to sort of announce their arrival, just sort of testing the waters. And they arrived there. Things were going well for a while, but then they got killed. They got killed. But then some other missionaries, I think relation, I think it might have been one of the man's wives, if I got the story correct, came back in and then started winning these people to Christ. Started winning them to Christ. A team player. His wife ended up being a team player. And I think one of his grandchildren was there at some event not long ago on this island, meeting the people that had come to know the Lord. Even though we may not experience that in our time, in our lives today, we will experience this when we get to eternity. In eternity, no more sin within our souls. No more. I'm looking forward to that day, amen. No more sin. I've had enough of it. <laughs> I've had enough of it in my own life. I've had enough of looking at it. I've just had enough. And this is where we concentrate on the Lord's work as a team, as a team. 
I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. 1 Corinthians 3, 6-7. See, it's God that's giving the increase. But through us, through you, he can give the increase. The last point is that faithfulness in the little things has its reward and greater opportunities. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, your own money, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? This is the parable of the unrighteous mammon where the servant, uh, he was... He, the, the wicked servant, as Christ put it, he was righteous with the mammon that he had in that he put it to everlasting um, foundations. But he was speaking to the disciples and the other people there. He was saying, if this man can be trusted, why can't I trust you with the money that I've given you? And I will give you more blessings if you will just look after what I've given you and tithe what I've given you, and maybe just give what you can into the offering. How can I trust you if you're not even looking after that which I've given you in the first place? Look up that parable. It applies to us today. It applies to me. Guilty as charged. But we don't have to be guilty. Once we realise, okay, I've, I've been making a mistake there, you see, this is an unforgotten test, and it's something I'll give in a few weeks, is our tithing. It's, an un it's a forgotten test that the Lord tests each and every one of us with. Is our money our God? At times, yes, it can be. It can be our God. But it's an unforgotten test. So what Christ is saying here, what the Lord is saying here, if I can't trust you with what I've, the little that I've given you, how can I trust you if I give you more if you're just going to spend it on yourself and not give it to a church or to the missionaries or whatever the case may be? How can I trust you? We've got to be honest. We've got to be trustworthy. We've got to have integrity. This is our character. This is part of the quality, all these 10 points of quality. So these 10 qualities of team evangelism, do you and I stack up? Do we stack up? I don't think I do at times. No, I don't. And it's to my shame. And I've got to come to before the Lord and repent until I do stack up. But if we're reading and in the Word of God, He can keep us in check. You see, if we forego our daily Bible reading, if we forego our daily prayers... And who else comes in and starts taking residence? It's the world. And then, as far as being a team player, we're kind of ruined. We've got to keep our eyes on the prize, brethren. The world is falling around from us. We can see that. It's falling apart. We understand that. How long we've got here, we don't know. But the Lord Jesus has asked us to spread the gospel and win souls. Not to win arguments, not to fight the government, not to hate, which is hard, but he's told us to love. And especially love the brethren, those that we can help. So how about this week? We, just, we go through what we've just spoken about today, about these 10 things of, of being a team player, the 10 qualities. Do you have the 10 qualities needed in serving within a team. If you do, come and see me. Please, I'll give you a job. Easy as that. Give you a job. But do we serve as a team? Or do we serve as lone wolves? Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your words today, Father. And they are convicting words, Father. You've convicted me with these words. Father, I just pray that all of us here today, Father, will see this as a commandment from yourself, dear Lord, through your words, that we need to be team players. And indeed, Lord, do we have these qualities of serving you. And Father, may we all look out for each other in this church, Father, and consider each one equal in your sight, Father. Lord, we just pray that, that division and strife and arguing and contention will never come into this church, Father. We just pray, Lord, that we'll leave our pride out the front door if we do have any. 
Father, we are all on equal footing. Dear Lord, please just speak to our hearts today and how we can best serve you, dear Lord. Once again, Lord, we just thank you for today, your day, we could come out apart from the world and meet as a congregation of saved people. Once again, Lord, thank you and please take us away from these premises here this week. Keep us safe spiritually, physically and mentally, the Lord, as we go out to do battle with the world, so to speak. Once again, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your graciousness and your faithfulness in our lives. As we sung in that hymn today, the Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Once again, Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.